Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you all faces. God uh, has kept us from Sunday to Wednesday and has brought us together for another night of uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Last week, we missed Duke to Ash Wednesday um, service at uh, Mount Liberty, but we're grateful that we're here tonight on Zoom um, to share another portion of God's word. Uh, Psalm 133 Remind us, Robin, that um, it, it said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to come together in unity. Um, it's amazing that we can come together on Wednesday night in unity and, and look at God's word. We may not always agree uh, on everything, but God's word is true. Um, God's word don't lie. Um, it will carry out things that it was called to do, and it's here to teach us, lead us, and guide us in the way that we should go. And since Robin, since I don't hear you on Sundays, um, did God put a song on your heart this evening that you could sing to us? We, uh, if nobody else missed the singing, Robin, I sure do. I sure will. <laughs> you hear me? We hear you well. Mm -hmm. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you Hey, man, thank you, uh, Sister Robin, reminding us uh, that we have an anchor. We have a solid rock. And our anchor is uh, the Lord and his uh, son, Jesus. Um, we all we need to be reminded that uh, we're not in this world by ourselves, that we love that God loves us so much. Um, and that song remind us that we have an anchor. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Sister Robin. Um, for singing that. Reverend Eastman, I see you anxious to pray, so if you can open us up with prayer. I uh, appreciate it. We come and say thank you, God, in Jesus Christ, love and name again for blessing of all to be able to reconvene for another Bible study. Lord, your word is this. You said those who hear your word, Lord, that it will go out with understanding. So now, God, we ask you at this time to open our minds, our hearts, and ears that the words that come out, Lord, they come with understanding. We pray for the speaker, Lord, as he decreases, you increase it, God. And we just give our thanks to you again for just getting us through this part of the week, Lord. And now if we get ready to listen to this word, we just ask you, Lord, to just continue to keep us down in this. In Jesus' name, we ask amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Eastman. I'm um, yes, good sir. to see all of you that's on. I, um, I was wondering if our youths were on or kids, um, if they were, 
Um, I think I saw Sister um, Smith um, that we can move those over to their room. And we pray um, for, oh, and I see Sister Archibalds. We pray um, for a good study with the young, with our young. Okay. Are we good? All right. Um, good to see you, Sister Rosemary, Brother Smith. Uh, I thought I saw um, Sister Dotson, Sister Tracy, uh, Sister Roberta, and some numbers I can't figure out, but um, I'm sure we'll hear voices soon. Um, we're still in First John, um, five chapter five, and we're um, want to move and hopefully uh, uh, get uh, through tonight. Hopefully, we're um, in verse eleven that we'll start out um, with tonight. Just wanted to see if you have any questions um, um, before we get into the lesson. You all loving First John? Since John telling you you got to love, you got to believe in Jesus. He's telling us, he's telling the church that there's some things that you have to do. Um, and then um, he tell us that if we believe in Jesus, um, yeah, we should believe in God. If we believe in God, we should keep His commands, right? If we love God, we should love uh, others. And then when we get down to verse seven, it talks about that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. I'm so glad that they agree, uh, Sister Pat, because if they didn't agree, then there'd be some, there'd be some problems. Um, but those three are one. And uh, in verse eight, it said, there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and water and the blood and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, uh, the witness of God is greater. Uh, how many get so excited, you know, when they have a, a witness from a man or a woman, they, they, they receive some witness and, and they're excited about what they heard? Some of you, yeah. But then, and, and we do, we get excited, this is the problem, but... Um, it says the witness of God is greater uh, because God don't have any flaws. Uh, he doesn't have any issues there, Sister Rosemary. God knows um, uh, what's best. So, you know, to sum it up, he's telling us um, when we get down to where we are from verse 1 to through verse 10, one, we need to believe in God, believe that he is, believe that God is able, believe that God don't lie, believe that God sent his son, believe that God's commandments are great, believe that we need to follow him. And he, John's telling us that. Um, and then when we get down to um, verse 11, he said, and this is the record that God had given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. We can have eternal life if we um, obey his commandments, if we do what God tells us to do. When we leave this life, we can have eternal life. Now, many people don't believe that, uh, Reverend Eastman, that, you know, that some people still believe when they die, they just dead. Yep. There's no judgment coming, right? There's no effects. Right. When I leave here, I'm just dead. I ain't nothing else. I'm dead. I'm going back to the dust. I, I, there's no consequences there won't be any worshiping your spirit goes nowhere but um it just it, it doesn't do anything so we have people that believe that that's true but in god's word it tells us that where's a place the spirit will go and that um there's some things that's going to happen um if we doesn't do this and um and, and god wouldn't tell us and have us going through all this um, and being obedient if there was no consequences behind it, right? Right. Okay. So we're going to start out in verse uh, 12. 
And um, did I see, uh, oh, uh, Sister Freeman, you can say hello to him if you uh, if you can greet the, the, the Bible study. That's the, at the end, I'll forget. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, we're going to start in verse uh, 12 and 13, Sister Rosemary, if you, uh, if you have your Bible. I do. I'll read them from the ESV. Okay. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Thank verse you. 12 and 13. Thank, thank you, Sister Rosemary. That's that's it. I, I, I like your translation. I'm I'm looking at the King James where um also he said that the son have life. Mm -hmm. And he that have not the son of God have no life. What does right. what what is John is saying? I mean, because I'm breathing, you know, I, I'm I'm not believing, but I, I'm breathing. So I, I'm I still have a little life. Is that what he's saying? Or is he so saying you do not have eternal life? You don't have eternal life. So he that have not the Son of God have not life. You don't have eternal life. Okay, you can do whatever you want, right? On earth, you could do all that. You could say, um, you know, I am who I am, but I don't believe in 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 Jesus. Well, um, chances are there won't be eternal life unless. You accept him as your personal savior before you leave on this side. But then John said, these things I have written to you that you believe on the name. I'm, I'm writing these things. I don't have to. That meant there are some people that didn't believe. We still got some folks who proclaim to be Christians that still don't believe, not really believe or truly believe because he's not physically here beside them. He said that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. I'm pushing you to believe in this name. How hard was it to get people to believe on? I write these things to you that you believe on. Huh? It must have been a little difficult. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Why else would he be writing to say that? So... He, he's letting us know if we trust in Jesus, Tracy, if we just trust in him, if we just believe on him, you know, if we um, obey that we will receive the eternal life. Right? Right. Okay, y'all look quiet. And I'm going to wake you up in a minute. <laughs> Let's look at, um, if it, can somebody get John 10, 27? And um, someone else get Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. So John 10, 27 through 29. John 10, 27 through 29? Mm-hmm. Okay, I have it. Come on, let's go with it. Uh, seven. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know okay. them. And they follow me. Okay, now here's the thing. We didn't cover that last week, right? I talked a little bit about it. But Jesus is saying, my sheep, what? Knows my voice. Mm -hmm. What else, Tracy? And then 28 says, and I give them eternal life. Okay. And, they, and they shall Listen, never perish. Jesus said, I give. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. No man can do that. Mm. Nobody but you. I give eternal life. Mm. Now, for those of you that already have your checkbook ready to write to a man down here that you think could give you eternal life, just save that money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't be tricked. Don't be fooled. Mm-hmm. Because there are some pastors, there are some priests, there are some people that will trick their folks into doing stuff that's not true. He said, I give. Jesus is the only one that can do that. First, he said, my sheep know my voice. What does that mean by that? He means that, listen, they know when I speak. Anybody ever raise sheep? 
I don't know. I haven't. Anybody ever been around them? No. Okay. They're 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 not the brightest and the smartest, but they know the shepherd's voice. But Jesus said, "I give; no man can do it." Go ask, uh, go, ahead, Sister Bone. And they shall never perish. Okay. Neither go on. And neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You can't even be snatched out of His hand. My Lord, if you allow Jesus, right, right. to lead you, <laughs> if you trust him and believe him, you can't, you, he can't, that you can't be snatched out of his hand. He got you. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. We got to want to be in his hand. We got to want to follow. We got to want to allow him to lead us through the word. How does he lead us? Through what? Through the word. Yes. Okay, if you're not studying the word or not looking at it, then you really can't be led. Not only uh, looking at it, but then following it. Mm. You know, I used to love to hear people say, you know, I could, um, you know, I don't read the Bible, but, you know, you know, God will just reveal whatever he says to me. Well, he can. But then it also tells us that we should study to do what? To show ourselves. Mm -hmm. Approved. So when we look at 12, you know, you know, it, it, he's he's letting us know, one, that we have to have some unity. Right? right. They're in the unity. He that have the son have life. You, there has to be some unity. And only Christ, only in Christ, we could find that eternal life. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's, it, it's a gift from God. It's a gift from his son. And all of us want to receive it. Right. Mm -hmm. How many want to stay stay on earth and never die? Mm -hmm. You know, be old as I don't know what. You know, us <laughs> men be gray as I you know, uh, uh, just just turning gray and our <laughs> limbs are getting weak and our eyes are getting dim and uh, we can barely walk, you know, 150 years old and still don't want to go. Who has Ephesians 2? Thank you, uh, Trace. You finish that? Yes, sir. Okay, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Thanks, Sister Bonnie. You're welcome. Anybody? Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Mm -hmm. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And now, this by grace, God has, his grace is sufficient, right? Right. God has good grace. God don't come and say, I'm not going to give you this grace because you didn't say what you was going to do. <laughs> I'm not going to give you this grace because you wasn't obedient like you said you was going to be. God, grace is sufficient. God, give us grace. What else, sister? And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Now, you we can't take the credit right. that God gives us. That God does. We we can't take the credit. It can only come from him. Right? Yes. Right. Keep, keep on going. Not a result of works so that no one can boast. Mm. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. My Lord. Ephesians, let, it, 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 they let us know about how good uh, God grace is. But, you know, we have this gift. He give us this gift. The eternal life is the gift that we're looking for. Right. He's gone on record. God has done everything. You know, he has um, has taken care of us. He's he, God is not a liar. And, and it tell us that if we don't believe in his son, right, um, not to believe, it makes him a liar. And if God's a liar, Nothing is certain. God does not lie. Right. Mm -hmm. He wants us to know that we belong to him and he belongs to us if we allow him to. Right. True. So he's basically telling us we should practice righteousness here. And in verse 13, he said, I've written these things to you, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm talking to you. I'm writing to you. I'm letting you know. I'm, I'm pleading with you that you understand what God 
can do. So we, you know, he he's letting us know that we can have some confidence in him. Amen. Right? Right. Amen. John, he's, uh, he, he gets to the end of his letter. He's coming to the end. Um, he, he gives a purpose, right, um, that he's written so far. He's letting them know. He wants the Christians to be sure about eternal life, about the life that they're living. But you got to be true to it. It's a, you know, I can commend John because he wants the church <laughs> To rest, he want the church to have eternal life. He want the church to go to heaven. He want all of his members. He didn't exclude anybody. Right. In our own being, uh, Sister Madison, our own, you know, there's some people we may want to go to heaven with, and there's some we say, "Look, I show." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they got clicks down here. They're gonna have clicks in heaven. <laughs> They gonna turn they they turn their nose up in me down here. They gonna turn their nose up in heaven. I sure don't want them, but he want everybody, and that's what every pastor should want. Every minister should want to see every member in eternal life. You know, God gave that witness to His Son, right? He want us to have eternal life. Amen. Right? That's, That's right. a gift. That's a gift. But the gift come through his son, Jesus. And any questions or any, any comments on those two verses? All right? Okay. Let's look at a few more uh, scriptures. Um. Uh, now let's look at verse 14 and, and 15. Um, Sister, let's see who we have here. Sister Walter, is she with us? I can read it, Pastor. Now, who we got there? Sister Gail? Uh-huh. Okay, 14, 15. Okay, this is the New King James Version. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. My Lord. Thank you, Sister Gail. John said we have this confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. How many of us have that confidence? in God, that if we ask for him, I mean, how many just pray and say, you know, God might not answer my prayer? How many pray and have doubt in their prayer? I'm, I'm just asking now. Mm -hmm. When you have confidence in someone, what, what are we saying? You trust that person. Yes. You trust that person, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, you have confidence. You know, I had confidence that Pat was going to give me tickets to the Texas A&M game last week. <laughs> you didn't get them. Oh, I got them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting there as a proud pastor that the confidence I put in, in our sister, they came through. <laughs> Right. I have confidence that I'm going to see, you know, our members on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right. I trust that if one say they're going to be there, I mean, and we have a lot of them that, that send me messages saying, hey, I won't be here this Sunday. Mm -hmm. But then we have those that will send and say, well, I'll see you. Well, I trust unless something happened, I got confidence mm -hmm. in them, right? Right. Right. We we got confidence that the, the construction crew is going to do what they say they're going to do at St. Peter. Amen. Unless they show us different. We have confidence when we choose, you know, our uh, 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 
members of the different boards mm -hmm. that we can trust that they're going to do what they supposed to do. So he's saying that we are confident. We have this confidence in God. And we have to get to the point, church, we got to get to the point, members, that we could be confident that God is faithful. We got to be confident that God is true and he's just, that God will be with us always, even until the end. We have to have that confidence. That's right. Amen. And when we have that confidence, we are able to go to him. When we when we believe that we'll have eternal life, we can be confident that we can go to God and not want of anything. And then we're able to go to God in prayer. We can trust him in that. And we can be sure that he hear it. Now, he may not answer it the way we want him to answer it. Right. But we can be sure he hear us. Right. Mm -hmm. Many right. times when people are not sure they hear God because they're not sure if they're living like they're supposed to live. <laughs> we can be confident we're able to approach God how many are afraid to go to God in prayer I hope none of us right yeah. mm -hmm. uh -uh. I know we go to when we need some <laughs> Lord this is your your humble servant <laughs> You know me, Lord. I didn't. I, I I've been here five times this week, <laughs> and I just need you to move on my behalf. But it, it, John's telling us if we have this confidence that God will do it, and He He would hear us, and if we know that He hears us, verse fifteen, whatever we ask, we know we had a petition that desired of Him. Whatever we ask, God will show us. Now, he know what we can handle, what we can't handle. Right. Right? That's right. But God is a prayer and answering God, whether he give us the answer that we want or not. Mm. We can ask him for anything. Right. Right? He listens. Right. We're, we're certain about this. God hears us. He, he answers prayers. He, you know, the Bible tells his eyes is all over. His ears are not too heavy that he can't hear. His arms are not too short that he can't reach <laughs> and save. But then we need to know what God's plan is for us. Mm -hmm. Then we can ask it, right? Then once we ask, we got to believe that God's going to do the best thing that he can do for us. Right? Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It's one thing to know that Jesus is God and that we're his children, but what about the needs? What about our daily problem? What about everyday life? Do you believe that to, God to answer? Huh? Yes, we got to believe he, he wants a daily walk with us. Okay. What about the problem? He wants us to have a a moment, I think he wants us to have a moment by moment dependence upon him. Mm -hmm. Is that so scary? Yeah. Come on now. God wants mm -hmm. us to depend on him and not ourselves. Right. It's he that made us, not we ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to have that confidence in prayer. You know, there's a, you know, people don't, you know, even within our church, we still had, you know, get members that don't feel confident. Yes. And praying. They don't feel confident in going to God. They don't feel, you know, they, they feel like they have to be on this certain level. And they feel that they prayer is not as, you know, tied together like somebody else. And it don't sound, but it's the spirit that speaks through the person that's praying. Right. And God don't want us to all pray alike. What that sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus helped people when he was on earth. He's still helping them. He's still the advocate sitting on the right hand of God. Right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So we should have that confidence um, in 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 um in prayer with him. Right? Right. Excuse right. me, Pastor Junior. Baby, do you need to be moved? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 
How many believe we can go to God freely and tell him what our needs are? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing we must have? Confidence. We got to have faith. confidence, right? Faith. You got to have faith, faith right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got to have the heart mm -hmm. also. Yes. Able to do it. All right. Let's see. You got to have what? Relationship. Got to have a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to get Benny to teach you. I'll look quiet tonight. Y'all talk when Benny teaches. <laughs> huh? Nah. Okay. Verse... Let's look at verse 16 and 17. Sister Patton, you got it? No, I'm sorry. I'm really like doing other things. I'm like helping okay, people move no people problem. out. I'm I not really move people out. I, so I'm not keeping up. We got enough. I, 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 I got it, Pastor. Who we got? Bishop family. Come on, Bishop. Yes. It's okay, Sister Patton. We 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 understand. 16. 16 and 17. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin. That does not lead to death. You should pray, and God will give them life. Okay. I refer to those. Those I refer to those who sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. Mm. I am. Not, I am not saying that. You should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. Mm. Mm. Thank you, sister. Okay, I, I'm I'm looking at a version say, suppose it's sin. You see a brother or sister sin. Um, perhaps this sin is not one that leads to death. You should pray to God for that person. Then God will answer you. Mm. Right? He don't answer everybody else. You praying to him. Mm. Right. But if mm -hmm. you see your brother or uh, sister sin and it's not unto death, what uh, do, you, do you run to them first? No. No. Not according to the word. It said we should pray, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Once once we see him, we should pray. We we uh he shall act and, and give him life. We should pray when we go to him. Then you go to God and then you wait for God to answer you, and then he'll give you life, he'll give life to that person. Mm -hmm. Um that lets us know that we should be always praying for one another. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we can see him by what? Omission and commission. We can sin by uh, thought, word, or deed. But it's an if you see him, if you see your brother, if you see him, if you see him walk in the store and 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 walk out with a pack of meat out. Did y'all see the lady uh, a few weeks ago that went in one of the stores and came out with a bucket load of Stanley cups? Uh -uh. Oh, she yeah, had a basket yeah. load. Yeah, she's gonna sell them on the on the on the on the eBay. On the eBay, yeah. Oh goodness. So if you see her, what you gonna do? You gonna run in the store and tell them that uh she stole or you gonna pray for her? Tell, just tell me what you're gonna do. You you see this like she, she um, she's a member of St. Peter. Mm -mm. <laughs> and and here she go. And you I'm gonna go over there and say, sister, put them white folks down the top of the you <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna say go on to put them back and then you gonna pray put it put it back and we're gonna pray <laughs> that you get out of here <laughs> you pray that you're gonna get out of here without without going to jail without going to jail mm. if you see them commit a sin if you see them not only take something if you see them lie on one of your brother I mean mistreat one of your brother, if you just see them make false accusations, that's a sin. Mm -hmm. You go pray for that person. But here's the problem with the church and a lot of the churches 
Instead of going and praying for that person, they get on, they talk about it. Mm -hmm. They bash them. They beat them down more. They call the other person, tell them this, tell them. And it didn't say call somebody. He said, go to God and pray. Right. Then God will answer you. <laughs> and then he'll give life to that person. We all want to see our, 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 uh, our, our brothers and sisters doing better, not hurting. Mm -hmm. But doing better. Mm -hmm. But uh, however, there's a sin which leads to death. And, oh, and John said, I'm not saying that you should pray. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that you should pray about that sin. We, we should it, pray. I mean, Christian to pray. blasphemy. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is what is the to me? You talking about under unforgiveness? When it says there is a sin unto death, I mean that is. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the only. So ain't no need of you even asking about it. Mm -mm. For forgiveness, cause that's unforgivable. That's what I'm saying. Is that blasphemy? That's blasphemy. That's right. Yeah. But you know, the only unforgivable sin is the one you don't ask for. That means the one that you don't repent and ask God to. God is faithful and just to forgive us right. all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. But if you blaspheme, you just continue to do that and you stay on that. Then that's a sin that. That you. But whatever this sin is. I'm sorry, the way I'm reading this is he says, it says, there is a sin unto death. Mm -hmm. And I do not say that he should pray for it. That mean, I mean, I took that as if you commit that sin, ain't no need you praying about it. That, yeah. Ain't no need you praying about it, but there's also God will not, if you repent. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you continue on in that sin, that's one that you shouldn't pray about. If you know here, if you know in your heart that you don't, you know in your heart that you want to blaspheme, you know in your heart that this is a sin that I'm not going to ask for forgiveness for, then don't ask for it. Pastor. Come on. Um, I yeah, I was actually um I was listening to um Sister Pat and um I I was going to ask you if you could explain those two verses a little more because um when I read them as well I'm like a little confused. Okay, read your read yours one more time. Read verse sixteen. Okay, I'm gonna let my husband do it. Okay. We'll read from not that version. Yes. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Okay. Anybody got King James? I just have the new King James. Okay. My, my reads, I, I don't have my other Bible in here with me tonight, but mine reads like what Brother Bishop and Same so, thing. Yeah, it says there is a sin unto death. I mm -hmm. do not say that he should pray for it. Meaning you commit this sin, I ain't telling you to pray for this. Because okay. this is unto death. There's no coming back off of this. That's right, the way I took that. Already know. Okay, read 17. All unrighteousness is sin. Okay. And there is a sin not unto death. Okay. And read 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Okay. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Mm -hmm. Come on. And, and we know that the Son of God is come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Okay, thank you. So we know one that Christians are not perfect, right? Right. And and we do sin because the Bible says all have sinned and have come short, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of the glory. 
So when we see that Christian, we should pray about it, okay? We got a duty not to overlook uh, such sin. We have a duty when we know that people are in, um, especially if we know that they're committing, we got a duty to pray for them. We got a duty to look out for them. We got a duty to, um, to go to God. Now, there's a promise that God will answer the prayer, okay? Now, what we're saying when he says that I'm not saying that you should pray about it. The King James Version said, I don't say that he should pray about it, I, uh, that he should pray for it. There's a sin unto death. I don't say that he should pray for that sin unto death, <laughs> right? There's a sin unto death. I do not say he shall pray for it, that sin that is unto death. Not saying that, look, there's a sin unto death, I'm going to pray for it. So all unrighteousness is sin, verse 17, what it's saying. Mm -hmm. So that promise that God will answer the prayer, even he will give that person he has sinned, he will forgive them. See, I think the misconstruction is here when it says there's a sin unto death. I'm looking at King James, but I don't say he should pray for that sin. So you 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 don't pray for that. This is um you know that the you know sins that do not cause death. So um there's a part of death in all sin. A lot of times, you know, even when Jesus says in his word that um if you died your sins where I am, you cannot come, which means you hadn't asked for that forgiveness. Uh, you hadn't act if you die in your sins where I am you cannot come you can't be with me unless you have repented before you died sin it breaks the Christian unity uh, between us and God and the Lord and that person it needs God to forgive that sin and that's why he's saying they shouldn't pray for it he should pray for forgiveness he should repent or she that they ask for God forgiveness so that unity, that bond can be brought back between them and the Lord, right? So when we look at it, we can see that death, we can see that life, we can see that um, death and life, it refers to the spirit of the person when we look into this scripture. There's a sin which bring death to the human spirit, <laughs> And that sin, it refuses to agree with what Jesus said. It refuses to um, be obedient to what uh, the word says. And it said the person who does this, they do this sin, they don't trust in God. They don't trust in, in Christ. And they're not saying, you know, they're saying that we can sin, we continue. But we said we continue in sin, what? God forbid, he, he, he doesn't receive the benefits from Christ. He doesn't receive it unless that person go and believe first repent, but then they got to believe who Jesus is. So he said, if we continue in this, if you continue in that sin, it leads to death. The death of what? That death that separate us from God. Sin separate us from Christ. So when we pray and what we said, when he praying for it, he need to pray and ask God to come back. Look what David did. David did the utmost, had his, uh, the leader of the army killed, his, his head man. He slept with his wife. He got her pregnant. He did all this. And the punishment, he knew he felt the separation from God. And he wanted to be back in his grave. And he was like, Lord, if you could just remove this, if you if you could just forgive me and and uh, uh, for all my transgressions, then I tell others who are sinning, others who are breaking your law, others the same thing that tell them, look, you don't want this because it leads to death. So John, he does not advise us to pray for those who do this sin, that sin that is unto death. He's saying that, you know, we should pray and pray for them that the good results will come and that God will do the work. Okay, and then in verse 17, it said all evil deeds. I mean, they're saying anything evil. So, we're, we're you know, anything evil will lead, it's, it's a sin. Anything 
that uh, you know, and it will lead us somewhere. It said, "All righteousness is, is sin, but there's a sin not unto death." Mean that every sin don't lead mm -hmm. to death, but sin separate mm -hmm. us from God. Mm -hmm. All wrong thoughts and actions is a sin. Every even at the thought. Mm -hmm. You know, right. the thought that, you know, I, I don't like this person. You know, the thought that this person is not as good as me. Mm -hmm. You know, John, he he he's making this distinction between sins. And he said, he basically saying there's some that lead to death and there's some that don't lead to death. It does not mean that some sins are worse than other sins. And he it, it basically he's saying so there's there, false teachers that may have taught that uh, that not all wrong actions are sin, but all wrong thoughts and actions are sin. And all sins are serious. The reason so why I asked, told, Pastor, was he referring to blasphemy? A well, it doesn't say sin. It. It, 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 it doesn't say, see, he it, says, it's, yeah, that it doesn't there say is a sin. There uh -huh. is a sin. Yeah. That leads to death. Right. I'm well, not telling you to pray about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I. so that's why I was saying, like, is this verse just, is this referring to blasphemy? Well, it doesn't say blasphemy, Sister Patton, but no, we, it, we know that blasphemy is the only unforgivable sin. And that's why I said, John, he's making the distinctions between the sins. He's saying that some lead to death and some does not lead to death. And um, but he's saying this doesn't mean that one is worse than the other. He's basically saying you, because there have been some some teachers out there. There have been some false teachers that taught that, you know, not all wrong actions are sin. So he's trying to let them know that, OK, anything that you're doing against God. So it says don't pray for it. I do not say that he shall pray for it. There's a sin unto death. Do not pray for it. What is the sin unto death? Well, it doesn't tell us. But we know all sins are serious. Right? Yeah. So in 18, he goes on to say that those who are born of God do not continue to sin. The son keep them safe. The evil person, uh, the devil cannot touch him. We in 18 in King James, we know that whosoever is born of God, sin of not. Okay, that doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. That doesn't mean, but you the 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 key is that you try not to sin, especially intentionally. But he that is begotten of God, him keep of himself means that every day, you know, when Paul said he gets up and he buffered his body. He 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 do a self-examination that every day we should be getting up and checking ourselves. What did I do yesterday that God was unpleased with? Am I doing anything this morning that God is unpleased with? Am I going out throughout the day that God is unpleased with? Um, am I keeping myself within the commandments that God told me to do? Am I walking the pathway? Am I walking the way that God told me to do? Am I saying the things? That I should say, he's saying in verse 18, but he that's begotten of God, keep him himself, one that knows God, one that really trusts in him. And here's the thing it's we get so many distractions throughout the day that, you know, it's hard for us to really uh, keep ourselves all the time. But we should be focusing on what God needs to do and our decisions that we make throughout the day. Throughout the week, it should be keeping ourselves close to God. And it said, and that wicked one won't touch him, not. Who's the wicked one? Yeah. Hmm? Uh, the devil. The devil. Those who are born of God do not continue sin. The son keep them safe. The evil person, the devil, cannot touch them. When we uh, do that, you know. That keeps the devil off of us. God, you know, remember he had to get permission to even to handle Job. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we keep in ourselves um, like we should, um, 
the devil got to get permission to even bother us. He's busy. He said, you know, he's walking the earth to and fro, seeking who may he may devour. But still, when we got God, okay, in nineteen, and we know that we're of God, and I'm I'm trying to I'm a, I want to finish. That way, uh, we can pull over into into twenty uh, in, into uh, the next chapter. We know we belong to God, but the whole world uh, is the power of the evil person. Okay, somebody get nineteen through. Uh, oh, she, uh, um, Sister Patton read it all. So when we look at nineteen, I read to Amen. You read, you read to Amen, right? Amen. <laughs> so it said, and we know that we're uh, of God, and the whole world live in wickedness. John is saying, okay, even though we belong to God, even though you're walking right, even though you're talking right, even though you're living right, we still are surrounded with those that are not. Right. So how do we handle that? You know, how do we deal with that? You know, we know that um, no one person is, is born of God. We, we, we know that. No one who is born of God practicing. No one... You know, he, you know, Christians do not practice it is what he's trying to say. However, if we find a Christian that does, are they truly a Christian? We're walking and we're living a way he's telling us to do, but then we are, we're surrounded with those that don't want us to. How many of your friends, I mean, I don't know many of you that, you know, used to, used to hit the club or still hit the club. But if you're a, a Christian and you're surrounding yourself with those that still wants to go out and do that, I mean, we, we lie around. They they're gonna call. They were, you know, they they remember that that you know how you shut the club down. So let's see if you're still doing it. And he said, and we know that the Son of God in verse twenty uh, is is come, and He had given us an understanding that we know Him, that is true, and we are in Him, that is true. Even in the Son, Jesus Christ, this is true, the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. You know, John, is he, he's saying, look, you know, one, I'm looking at you as my children. I'm, I'm over the fly. I'm, I'm over this. I'm doing this. I'm, I want the church to know that um, Jesus has come. He gave us the understanding. He taught. The disciples, he taught everybody. He he gave them. We know that he's true. He know that God sent him. God is true. His son's true. Neither one of them lie. They do everything. This is true. And they give eternal life. So he's saying, keep yourselves from idols. What does he mean by that? False Lord, gods. Mm -hmm. Idol, mm -hmm. idol gods. False gods. Keep mm -hmm. yourself safe from false gods, right? Right. Mm -hmm. what, what can be false gods? Anything. A whole lot of things, a whole lot of things. Anything you put above God, right? You right. Value more. Anything you Your put above Him, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, John was writing to those Christians, and um, you know, he, he that city, at, um if I remember correctly, was given over to, um, they was worshiping of idols. You had the, uh, the temple of Diana, um, you know, from the ancient world. Yeah, we, we saw that when we studied Ephesus. Um, they was making and they was selling idols. That was one of the, the, one of the occupations. Y'all remember that when we studied Ephesians? Mm -hmm. And... They were surrounded by adultery. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, they was they were surrounded by a lot of idols <laughs> that they um, was worshiping. They was under a lot of pressure um, back then to you know to conform to those things that were going on. So he's he's telling them, you know, you gotta guard yourself from from these false things. You know, uh, we have to guard ourselves. You know, everything that we see that. That that you know that may be pleasing to our eyes and our ears and and um, you know we have to guard ourselves from that you know um, so you know to the human a lot of that stuff to us you know a lot of that stuff look real 
um, to the eyes, to the ears, you know, even, you know, uh, going in, that stuff look real, but it could be a real tragedy when we uh, get caught up in that. So he's saying, guard ourselves. Anything that take the place of God, anything that get in the midst of God, anything that we put before God, that we need to guard ourselves from that. Because um, there's so many things out there that can tempt us if we don't guard ourselves, if we don't guard our hearts, our eyes, our minds, our spirits. Um, you know, those things can do that. Those things can happen. So he says in verse 20, little children, keep yourselves from idol. Be careful. Be careful and um, stick with what you know. The real, true, loving God. All right. We got five minutes left. Any any questions? Our sister, our bishop, that 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 were, were we clear on 16? Uh yes, it's clear as down. Yeah. It's, 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 it's good. <laughs> okay. So, um, Pastor Freeman. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, I'm still stuck on those verses. You know, when I talk about uh, there's a sin that leads to death. Then the uh, then you got the sins that do not lead to death. But for some reason, I my mind went back to when the two thieves were on the cross uh, mm -hmm. with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Both of them, they were both, you know, they were criminals. They were both sinful. But one of them said, if you will, remember me. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and he said, This day you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I'm I'm thinking because this man, he wasn't just asking for a favor, he realized who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. He realized his wrong. And in I, I guess you could say it was like he was repenting, even though he said those words, remember me. It's like, I know who you are. You're mm -hmm. the son of the living God, you know. And, and so I was just, to me, that kind of came to my mind when you're trying to talk about, um, you know, sin and sin that leads to death. You know, right. when you, you, yeah, I just, just thought on that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, and and that's a, a good example, uh, Sister Robin, because you know, one believed and one didn't, right? Right. Um, one one made fun. But yeah. when we look at um, you know, 16, it's talking about death and life, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's taught he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. So he's making a distinction of death and life, and he's referring to the spirit of us he's referring to the spirit of, of of a person right um he's there's a sin which bring death to the human spirit he's he's referring to uh, the spirit that 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 sin that he's talking about it refuses it don't want to agree that jesus christ is the son of god and the person who does not you know that the one that does the sin the one that does not trust in Christ. He doesn't receive life from Christ. Because remember, he said, who that believe in me, right, okay. shall have everlasting life. Who that does not, they they were perish. Isn't it just so, like, excuse me, isn't it just like an atheist that does not believe in God, period? There's an atheist that just don't believe. So they won't see it. Is that, uh, who is that, Sister Darnita? Yes. Yeah. The atheist does not, the, the atheist Mm -hmm. um, they refuse to believe that God is God or don't believe in, in the son of Jesus. I don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. That person going to have some problems. Right? Mm -hmm. Because they just don't believe. So um, if, if, that's if, if they don't believe and they don't trust in Christ, well, how can they receive life from Christ? Well, that automatically they receive death. Automatic. Even the, the human spirit, they they bring in death to themselves right now. So we need not pray for those people. It, that's what I was going <laughs> to ask. That's what I was going to ask. Um, as well as uh, 
that means that that you know then we don't want to pay for them. Yeah. That, see, that's what the verse we're making was was meaning to me. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, can I ask you a question, Pastor? Come on, come on, Reverend. Yeah. All right. Okay, now I know I've heard some Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in Christ, but you know, they believe in God like that. So is they atheists? Like, I mean, I don't mean to be funny and that like that, but a lot of them, you know, don't feel like Christ is the way. They just they acknowledge God as Jehovah, but they don't acknowledge Christ. Right. I think if they acknowledge God, then they also acknowledge Christ because he is one. So Okay, okay. Mm, that's right. I've heard Jehovah Witnesses say that as well, but I also know Jehovah Witnesses that do believe in Jesus as well. So okay, okay, I yeah. think they'll look uh, a little confused. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't being funny then like that. I was just asking the question in general. That's all. I wasn't mm -hmm. being funny. But uh, Sister Darnita, that was a, <laughs> when you say don't pray for the atheists, you know, the Bible still, it, it could be a little confusing when it says pray for everyone. <laughs> because you know, the different versions of this, you know, summary can be confusion, confusing. So when I look at the King James, it, I don't say he shall pray for it. So I'm definitely looking at that, that he doesn't pray for, uh, there's a sin unto death that I don't pray for that sin unto death, not the particular person. Right. Just right. the sin. Just the sin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for the everybody. Mm. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Let's see. He 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 sums it. He comes back in verse seventeen and lets us know that all unrighteous is a sin. So that means even if I'm not an atheist, I was a Christian, and I just you know I decide I'm going to break God's law in sin. Then here I am now. I'm 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 committing a sin too, mm -hmm. as well. Right. So, um, so I was, you know, just trying to um, distinguish that what John is saying here. He's basically saying that we should, um, you know, there's a part of death and all in, in sin, but he's also saying that that unity, you know, we we have that human. He's 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 trying to separate the death and life here. Yeah, and and he's referring to the spirit of the person. <clears throat> But there's uh, a yes, sir. I just wanted to add, uh, just to just for my own understanding, uh, even the Jews at that time and even today, many of them they believe in God, but yeah. they didn't accept Jesus as the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So you're still in trouble if you don't accept Jesus as the right, Son of right. God, and yeah. that's what. That's what John has been saying throughout these, especially oh, yeah. put more emphasis on it in in uh, chapters four and five. So just because a person believes in God does not necessarily mean that that person believes in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. right? That's a separate thing. Mm -hmm. For those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, that's why we call ourselves Christians. Yeah. Okay. So uh, John is saying in these last two verses that you do have to believe in God, but you also have to believe in Christ. In Christ, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Just make sure we're saying that now. Yeah. In case okay. somebody has some doubt. Thank you, Brother Smith. Remember, Jesus said he's the way. I'm the way, the truth, and the yeah. life. No one comes to the Father, what? But by mm -hmm. me. Yep. Even the atheist is going to have to come to, if they want to see uh, God, they have to come through Jesus. The Muslims at one time, they didn't believe and some Muslims still don't. Um, but we do have some black Muslims now that believe in that Jesus is the son of God for a long time, for many, many years. They didn't teach that, but they have been teaching it by the last 15 years. All right. Any other questions, any comments? We, we've wrapped up five. Okay. Um, thank you all for uh, sharing in tonight's uh, Bible study, all the uh, comments and all the reading. 
the singing, the praying, um, what make this Bible study um, so great. Are the kids back over? Yeah. Okay. Let me thank the youth yes. and the teachers um, for our children's church, children's Bible study, youth Bible study. Um, I hope it was it was great. If you want to share at this time, you, you can um, from our teachers. Okay. Amen. Our teachers say we're going to remain silent. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Sister Archibald. Wonderful, oh, Sister yeah. Karenina taught a wonderful lesson. Uh, and we're dealing with the fruits of the spirit. We covered um, kindness, uh, self-control, and uh, patience. So, Amen. and Minister Stewart joined. Minister Stewart joined us as well tonight. We had Kalia, Julian, uh, Jackson, and Joycelyn uh, in uh, Bible study, and we hope that we have many more to come, but we thank God for those uh, four children, uh, our teens, preteens getting on tonight. Amen. Thank you, children, for getting on. Thank you, parents, for helping them get on, and thank you, teachers, for teaching. We have any um, any of our seniors or members that are by phone? Um, uh, yes. Okay. Um, you muted yourself, Cynthia. Okay, sorry. I have Sister Cotton on on my phone. Let me uh, go see if I can get her unmuted. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Jack. Sister Jackie's on. Sister Jackie Sanders, good to hear your voice, Sarah, sister. Hope you had right. a great day. I Sister did. Hill is on. Sister Hill. Mm hmm I hope you had a great day, Sister Hill. I did. All right. You bake any cakes today, right. Sister Hill? No, right. right. uh, I didn't bake any cakes. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was Pastor, what you asking for today now? What you asking for? I, I was uh. just wishing. It was just wishful thinking. That's all. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Sister Cotton is unmuted now. As, hello, Sister Cotton. No, I, I'm not unmuted. I'm right on. You don't you? Right on. on. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> it's good to hear I your been, voice. I, I hope all the is well thing. there. Yes, doing pretty good. Pretty good. All yeah, right. Thank the Lord. We praise God for uh, all of you, and especially. I think um, Sister Cotton is the oldest, isn't it now? She's is the oldest living member. 96, yes. Uh, she's oh, 96. 97. 97. Uh -oh. 97. Uh -oh. Get, them, get them numbers. All right now. <laughs> all the money, Blame them all. Blame them all. Oh, trying to make a hundred. Amen. Thank you for extending our members on um Sister Smith and those. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. If there's any prayer requests. Here are Melissa and Jessica Green, my family members. Amen. 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 Jesse Green. Uh Vanessa. Vanessa Green. Okay. And Vera Moffat. Mary Redman. Yes, Martha Leonard. Martha Leonard. Hold me Stan, Stan Stewart. Stan Stewart. Stan. 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 Stan with a Z. Z -A -N. Oh, Zan. <laughs> okay. All right. Mary Redman. Mary Redman. Surgery tomorrow. Redman. Okay. Okay. Harry miss... Cook. Sister Rosemary, uh, I got Vanessa Green. Who was the other one? Vera Moffat. Vera Moffat. Sister Smith, can you give me those names again? Uh, Mary Redmond is having surgery tomorrow. Okay, and that was somebody else, wasn't it? 
Uh, that was the only one I had. There was somebody else talking as well right after me. Josephine Cooper. Okay. Josephine. All right. Also, my brother, Henry Cook. I got Henry Cook. I got Vanessa Green, Vera Moffat, Josephine Cooper, Martha Leonard, Mary Redmond, Zane Stewart. And I, I miss one or two. Kobe I Turner. Kobe oh. Turner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My son, Kobe Turner. Oh, okay. Kobe. And my dad, I'm David White. David White. And Robin Hale, H A L E. Robin, Robin Taylor. Okay. I'm Pastor, my great niece, Carrie Mills. Carrie Mills. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Pastor, don't forget about uh, Tommy Lott. Yep. I just wrote his name down. Thank you. Anybody else before we go to God in prayer? All right. And Pastor, I know we always pray for, you know, our members. Um, but it just seemed like, you know, everybody I talk to, like it's an attack. Seemed like it has been launched um against the believers. And so just, you know, just the ability to stand, you know, through the attacks right now because the, you know, the enemy ain't playing and we gotta let him know that we ain't playing either, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, but it is it gets a little tough. Yeah, I hear you, Minister. And I agree. <clears throat> um, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, I would just like to give a praise report about my son Le Frederick. Um, he is walking and he is talking. Glory to God. And, hey, he, is, and yeah, he is eating, praise the Lord. And he is eating solids now. So uh, he still has a ways to go, but thank God for bringing him to this point. Amen. 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 What an awesome Amen. praise report, Amen. Sister Taylor. Any other praise reports? Boy, there's no secret what God can do. Amen. Even when we, um, you know, we, 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 yeah. If we trust and don't doubt, God will definitely show us he's stronger than any man. He's smarter than any yes, doctor. Lord. Yes, Amen. Lord. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for this prayer meeting, Father. Thank you for the Bible study and your word. Uh, Father, we know sometimes it confuses us, but uh, Father, in time, we understand what it is uh, through your word that you're teaching us. Father, we're grateful for all the members that were able to get on tonight. Uh, we pray for those, Lord, that wanted to get on but couldn't. Father, we lift up those uh, members that may be uh, traveling, Father, that you would give them um, traveling grace. Father, we come just thanking you, Lord, for being our God. Uh, Lord, you love us so much, more than that we love ourselves. Father, you want what's best for each and every one of us, Father, and we're so grateful for that. Father, we thank you even for your son. You loved us so much, you sent him to die for us and take away the sins of the world. Father, we're praying, Lord, as John uh, began to teach the church, uh, the members, the Christians, Lord, how we should believe in you, trust in you, uh, never doubt. And Lord, that we should uh, continue, Lord, to try and live a, a good life, Father, without uh, intentionally sinning. But Father, you are faithful and just to forgive us, Lord, for our sins and all unrighteous. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us to come to you and repent, Father. When we mess up, Father, you are able, Lord, to let us know, Father, that you want the best for us. So we're grateful and we're thankful. We love you, Father, for all the things that you do for us. Father, we come, Lord, praying, um, for Monticello Construction, Father, that you will continue to keep them on task, keep them focused, Father, on the building, Father, that we would 
I'll soon get back, Father, and to worship you in spirit and truth and um, the church that we love, Father, the one that you allow us to go in and worship you. Father, we're grateful, Lord, even for Rawlings uh, extending their doors and opening their doors for us to go in and worship you, Father. Father, we pray for every auxiliary, Father, that uh, that are under uh, the St. Peter Church. Father, every ministry, Father, that's under the church, Lord, that we will continue to operate, Father. And Lord, that we will operate in the spirit of excellence. Father, you are an excellent uh, God. You're an excellent Father. Uh, you do not even fail, Father, but you do all things well. Father, we come tonight, Lord, lifting up some of our members in Jesus' name. Father, to you, Father, we first want to praise you, Father, for the praise report that we received. Um, LaFrederick, Father, we pray, Lord, for continued improvement in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for showing us there's no secret that you can do, Father, that you still have all power, that you're still able to just speak things, Lord, uh, speak healing, Father, speak life. Lord, even you speak there, Father, but we're so grateful, Lord, that uh, what we've heard on tonight, that give us inspiration, Father, to know that um, if you can take care of him, Father, you can take care of us. Lord, if you can uh, give him a little more uh, power, Lord, if you can give him a little more uh, strength, Father, you can give that to us. And Father, we pray, Lord, for his mother and his father, his siblings, Father, his children, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would keep them in perfect peace, Father, and that you would bless them with what they need in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up our seniors to you tonight. Lord, asking that you would keep your angels camped around them in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would not let anyone take advantage of them, Father, but Lord, keep them in having a sound mind, Father, and they can make sound judgments, Father. Lord, keep them uh, well-rounded in the name of Jesus. And Father, thank you, Lord, for the long uh, lives that we've heard, the long ages that we've heard, Father, in the name of Jesus. They give us inspiration, Lord, that we can receive the same. Father, we come tonight lifting up Sister Pam Hill to you. Uh, we lift up Henry Cook to you right now, Vanessa Green to you right now, Kobe Turner right now in the name of Jesus, Josephine Cooper, Lord, we lift up Martha Leonard to you and Zane Stewart, Father, we lift up David White. We lift up Mary Redmond, Father. We lift up um, Sister Hale, Father. We lift up Tommy Lott and Vera Moffitt, Carrie Mills, Father. And there may be others. We lift them up to you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, you heard the petitions. You know what's going on, Father, with them. You've created them. You've made them. You know all about it. So, Father, we ask that you do what no man can do, Father. And, Lord, we ask that you would just activate your power, your Holy Spirit among them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Whether if it's healing, Father, heal them in Jesus' name. Father, if it's encouragement, encourage them right now in Jesus' name. If it's strength, Father, strengthen them in Jesus' name. Father, if it's financial, Lord, bless them financially. You're the richest uh, man in the universe. Whatever it is, Father, you know what it is. Do what you're going to do, Father. And we claim victory, Father. We've heard John say, Father, that we should have confidence in you and trust in you, Father. And we're trusting in you right now, Lord, that we have faith in you, Lord, that we can come to you and pray and you would hear, not only hear, that you would answer the prayers. Father, we ask that you would answer on tonight. And we believe and we trust that you would answer. Father, we pray that you would keep us in perfect peace as we close, Father, uh, this prayer. Lord, that you would uh, keep your angels camped around all of us, Lord, throughout the week. Block us from the fiery dots of the devil, Father. The minister Stewart mentioned, Father, that, the that we're under attack, Father. Father, but we know that you're able to control the devil, Father. We know that you have all power and you're able to, Lord, sit him down if you will, Father. We're praying, Lord, that those that here are trying to attack, block them right now in the name of Jesus, Father, and show yourself strong in Jesus' name. We will continue to trust in you, honor you, and give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we ask, amen, amen. 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 Amen.
Good night. Love you all. Bye.